In this materials list overview video, we'll cover creating a materials list, configuring the materials list, how to use the structural member reporting, explore the master list for pricing, and saving a materials list and report. As you build your model, the materials list is automatically calculating all the components. The more accurate your model, the more accurate your materials list will be. In this sample plan, let's start by creating the materials list. You'll find the materials list located underneath the tools menu. For the materials list, you can calculate for all floors and by room. In this overview rendering, let's begin by calculating the materials for all floors. This will open up a new window, and as you scroll down, you'll see various categories for foundation, subfloor, framing, exterior trim, all of the components have, have been added into the design at this point. In the Windows category, currently I have a handful of windows. If you move back over into the 3D view, in fact, let me just tile my views by pressing Shift F6 on the keyboard. If I take one of the windows in this area over here and I make it a little bit smaller, over in the materials list, you're going to notice that it added a new window. Previously, I had three windows of the same height, and when I resized this one to be smaller, it automatically updated in the materials list. As your model updates, the materials list will dynamically change. Let's take a look at running a materials list by room. As I click inside of one of the rooms, there is a calculate materials list by room. In this case, I have a small bathroom highlighted. In my lower edit menu is an option to calculate the materials by room. This will give you a quick snapshot into the room. In some cases where it shares a wall between two rooms, you may need to check to see which room owns the door or may own a window. So be a little careful when you use this tool. When you are calculating your materials list for the entire project, as I go back into the materials list and calculate for all floors, you can change this by floor. Under the Edit Active View tool, come in to the Options panel, and you can restrict your materials list to a single floor. In this case, I have a foundation and an attic. I'm going to go ahead and select Floor 1. As I make that change, the materials list will then update and only show those elements for floor one. As I go back into the edit active view, let's go ahead and take a look at all of the different settings in the materials list. Let's begin with the categories. You can isolate particular categories in your materials list if you want to remove accessories or cabinets or electrical. This will update the materials list and remove those items inside of the materials list. For the columns, you can control which columns are being displayed in your materials list. If it's not relevant and you don't want to see that category, you can simply remove the check mark and remove those elements for those columns. The appearance allows you to change the way the materials list looks. I currently have a green shading. If you wanted to change that, shading to a slightly different color, then you can make that update to make the changes for your materials list. These settings, if you find that you want to make these all the time, are available in the materials default settings. As I go over into the default settings, let's come up to our default settings. And underneath the default settings, are two areas for materials list and materials list polyline. For the materials list defaults, the same type of dialog opens up. You can make the changes if you always exclude a certain item in the categories, you can remove that. And in the columns, if you remove the subcategory or add other ones, it will always have these settings. And let's go ahead and make that same change for gray. And then as a report settings, which will save a static view of your materials list, you also have access to this in the materials defaults. 
In addition to the materials list is a materials list polyline, which allows you to do it by area. And I'm going to review that here in just a second. There are settings you can control for the defaults. When you run this tool, it will then use those defaults for this particular plan. If this is something you do all the time, consider making these changes to your materials list and materials list polyline in your template plan. When I close this live materials list, the program is prompting me to save it. And the reason it's prompting me to save it, a couple things, I changed the color. I also configured this materials list to be by floor. And if I wanted to save this to recall it later, in this same configuration, I could save it. It would show up in my project browser. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and not save this. The next way you can run a materials list is by area. And specifically, this is done through a materials list polyline. You can also draw a CAD polyline and convert it to a materials list. You can find the process for creating a materials list polyline up into the tools menu, materials list, and you can do a materials list polyline. And you can click and drag this materials list polyline around the area that you want to calculate. Once this materials list polyline is created, you can then click on this. In the lower edit menu is the option to calculate the materials in the polyline. This allows you to be pretty specific with your materials list by area. As I move back over into the floor plan view, click on the materials list polyline, and then use the open object this is a similar dialog we were looking at in the default settings earlier. This allows you to control how the materials list polyline is going to calculate. This can be done for all floors. And you'll notice that all of the categories are listed by floor. You can remove items in and out. This can be a useful way to manage a remodel project. And then at the very bottom are a couple ways that it's going to calculate intersected objects contained within and objects contained by center. You might try adjusting this with a sample project if you're calculating your materials by area just to see how this works. A few other settings for the pie line, the layer, selected line, those, most of those elements are not really relevant to calculating a materials list. When you draw a rectangle, just using a simple CAD tool, if I were to draw one over in this area, this can be converted to a materials list polyline. Using the tool called Convert Polyline is the option to convert this to a materials list polyline. Once converted, it will then act exactly like the one we created from the menu above. When calculating a materials list, let's go back into our materials list and calculate for all floors. When you calculate a materials list, you can also manage this through a layer set. As I open up the materials list specification, currently the materials list is using the default layer set called the materials list layer set. You can come in here, you could make a copy of this materials list and remove items that you didn't want to include. In fact, I've created one specifically for floor framing. And what this does, as you kind of look in here, is it creates a handful of items just for the floor framing. And once I close this, and you, I'm using this materials list just for floor framing, the materials list updates and it's only using those items. Slightly different approach than using the categories above. And you could come in here and remove everything except framing. If I removed everything clear all except the framing category, I'm still going to get wall framing and roof framing. And you can actually see that zeroed it out. That's because that framing is also in the subfloor. So you can use the categories to get close. But by building a layer set, in this case, I've built a layer set by making a copy of it just for floor framing. And I can control the materials list through a materials list layer set and isolate 
only those things I want for the materials list. Let me switch this layer set back to the materials list. I'm also going to reset the categories back and I'm just going to select all, turn all of these on. The next element I want to take a look at is the structural member reporting. Up in the upper left hand corner of my menu is what's called structural member reporting and there's a handful of categories, lineal length, buy list, cut list, and mixed reporting. The lineal length is going to give you, if we kind of zoom down and look at the first category in framing, how many plates I need. I need 529 plate feet in this project. If you switch this over to the buy list, then the framing is going to change to be quite a bit different. And you notice that the fur plate now is coming in. This is a 2 by 6 by 16 foot. This is going to change. This is based on the structural member reporting lumber table. There's a separate video on that. And the way you can access that is underneath the materials list, you can come down into the structural member reporting. When you're on the buy list, you click edit. Here is a lumber table that the program is using. I would encourage you to maybe customize this in your template plan for the common lengths you use. And you may also want to move this up and down based on priority if the lumber store has a better deal on a 14 foot versus a 16 foot then you can come down into this and move these items up and down to increase or decrease the priority when the program does the calculation. At the bottom of the structural member reporting is a few options for longer board runs and how it calculates that. You can come in here and choose how you want this to calculate and so you can control through the structural member reporting how that lumber information is being reported into the program. Now when I switch this to the cut list this is going to change again this is using the cut list based on your model and then mixed reporting is going to calculate the framing materials using a combination of the lineal lengths and piece counts and again you may just try this with a sample project to see how you can use this materials list to best calculate for your projects. The structural member reporting will only work for your framing members, not relevant for other components such as your roofing or flooring materials. In this materials list, notice that there is no pricing information. You can easily enter in pricing information if you know a particular price. And for this 2 by 10 header, price per foot, Let's say that we put in $3. The program is going to prompt me to turn off the automatic wall framing, which I'll go ahead and do. And that's going to give you the total cost. Now for commodity items, just above that is the 9 foot or 10 foot stud that we have in here. And if I were to come in here and put a price, let's just put in $11 for these studs. If I select this and I know that this price is going to calculate quite a bit for commodity items, I can add this into what's called the master list. So since I've got the price in here for these studs, I can come over and there is a option here to update to the master list. That will then add it into the master list and if I open up the master list, you can see that it's now included inside the master list. Every time I run the materials list, then it's going to use this pricing information. The master list is typically a good area where you can put in your pricing for commodities. Could be a cubic yard of concrete. Anything that you know a pricing in a commodity style price is a good area for that in your master list. With pricing, if I scroll down into the windows category, and let's say I've got a hopper window that's 32 by 28, I've got six of those. If I come in here and I put in the price for those hopper windows, put in $500, then I go back over into the model. Let's just click on this and use the tool Find Object and Plan. And in this case, the program has highlighted all of those windows. If I take one of these windows and I resize it, and then I go back into the materials list, you can see that it took the resize of the window 
at 55 inches by 28, it left the pricing inside of that window. So if you're making changes in your side of your pricing and you then go back and modify an object, beware that the pricing was entered into that object and remains with that object until you make the change. In this case, if I just update that to $800, then the pricing will then be updated. So this materials list is live. Anytime you're adding components into your model, the materials list is updating. When you get to the point and you want to save off a snapshot, that is called a report. To save this off, I'm going to come up into the materials list and then down at the very bottom, generate a report. It looks very similar, the color slightly different. That's because of my default settings has that as a blue stripe. You can change that to whatever you want. This is a static list. It is now saved. You can see that up in the title bar, it has a date and a time. When you close this list and you look over in your project browser and we come down to reports, you'll see that report is saved in here. And if you've saved any special configurations for the live materials list, those two will show up underneath your project browser.